If chicken is on the menu quite often, then you have to change things up and try my easy Moroccan chicken recipe. I think of my Moroccan chicken recipe as like a cheater's version of Moroccan tagine, except far easier. Same big bold flavors though, so we're gonna get right into it. Really the star ingredient here is Ra's al Hanout. Ra's al Hanout has its origins in Morocco and it's a beautiful combination of seasonings including allspice, fenugreek seed, turmeric, ginger, cumin, very warm, very exotic. You can find it on our shop, the Mediterranean dish. Com. Just hit the shop tab when you get there. One and a half tablespoons of Ra's al Hanout. Smells so good. Then we're gonna go ahead and do cinnamon, about one and a half teaspoons, and then a little bit of ginger, just about a teaspoon or so. Smells so good. Okay, next we have some sweet paprika, about a teaspoon. It's in there. <laughs> teaspoon. And then a teaspoon of black pepper. Oh yeah, flavor party right here. And we have quite a bit of chicken to season, so when you look at the seasoning, don't get scared. You do need it, because you need the chicken to be fully seasoned, okay? One of the things that people really get wrong when it comes to chicken is they tend to season on the top, you know, on the outside, but you really need to get underneath the skin. So I'm gonna show you how I like to season my chicken. I like to loosen the skin on all the chicken so I can get underneath and really season it. I usually do a whole chicken and just kind of divide it up. It's already been divided for me. Either way is just fine. Once you loosen the skins, then you have access to seasoning right underneath here. See that? First, we're gonna go in with the kosher salt. Liberally season on all sides and especially underneath. Nobody likes boring chicken. Like I said, if you're cooking a lot of chicken, you're gonna wanna change up the game once in a while. I guarantee everyone will call you the chefiest of chefs. So now once you've kind of given the chicken a little TLC with the salt, you're gonna go ahead and again, liberally season the chicken with the Ras Al Hanout cinnamon paprika mixture here that we made. So Ras Al Hanout is a mixture of spices. The word Ras means head. So basically this is the head of spices or like, I don't know, the best of the best, your top shelf uh, seasoning right here. And it has all these beautiful, exotic North African flavors, ginger, fenugreek seed, allspice, cumin, cinnamon, it's just really lovely and warm in every way. Your goal is to use the entire mixture of the seasoning all over this chicken and particularly underneath. Look at this, huh? Huh? Check this out. You can work on this ahead of time, even one night ahead and you can cover it and leave it in the fridge or you can just let it rest for a few minutes right here just to allow the chicken to kind of, I don't know, absorb some of these beautiful flavors. Or you can go ahead and cook it right away. It's very flexible, so let's go to the stove. Nice, large, big pan, medium-high heat, drizzle of extra virgin olive oil, the good stuff. I'm, of course, using our olive oil from the MediterraneanDish.com. Shameless plug, but it's the best. We want to brown the chicken on both sides, and that's part of kind of building flavor. We're gonna drop one and see if it sizzles. Oh yeah. We're going with skin side down first. And if you have to do this in batches, go ahead, no big deal. Sizzle, sizzle. Turning it around. Mm, good. Yeah. These are looking good. You're just looking to get them browned a little bit. And we're going in with our next batch because you don't want to crowd the pan. If you crowd the pan, you're not going to get the results you're looking for, right? With the crispy skin and color, right? Okay. I think he approves. It smells really good here. And that Max knows flavor. <laughs> okay, that's great right here. We're going to turn it over. Oh, yeah. We're gonna add all our chicken back in here. And some of what you see in the pan is really just the seasonings and such. Now we're gonna go in with the rest of our flavor makers. We're adding onions, garlic, and cilantro. Turn your heat down to medium, low, or so at this point. 
and we're gonna add the onions, garlic, and chopped cilantro. And we're gonna cover this to allow the onions to soften just a little bit, about, you know, three to five minutes or so. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and add a few more items. I see the onions have sweat. That's it, and we're gonna just kinda push things around. Here we go, beautiful. Now we're gonna go in with a few slices of lemon, and if I were making this the traditional way, I'd probably use preserved lemon, which I have an amazing recipe on our site for. But when you don't have preserved lemon, you just add slices of fresh lemon. You know, the acid from the lemon is going to really balance out all the warmth and sweetness, which we're about to add. Moroccan cuisine is very known for combining sweet flavors that are nice and subtle, so it's not overly sweet, with warm, earthy spices. So we're adding actually some raisins and some dried apricot. Dried fruit is used in a lot of Mediterranean cooking and Middle Eastern cooking, but also Moroccan. As these dried fruit kind of melt into this goodness, they will impart a very subtle sweetness. You won't even know they're there, but they will really round out the flavor of this chicken with the citrus from the lemon. Add a few olives here. So this chicken is going to be rocking with flavor, you guys. We've got subtle sweetness, warm, earthy spices, and then we have some briny olives. It's so good. Before we cover and let this party cook, we need to add some liquid in the form of broth, but I'm adding to it a little bit of tomato paste. It adds some umami and brightness that is so different. So you'll be surprised how much this little bit of tomato paste will add to this chicken. So I'm gonna mix in a bit of my broth here just to loosen the tomato paste. You don't wanna just kinda drop a thick lump of tomato paste in your food. So this is why we do this. Going in and then chicken broth, which you can do all over or to the side. Back to like medium high. I wanna see some bubbles for about five minutes or so, then we're gonna cover and let it cook. Okay, things are happily bubbling. I'm gonna turn the heat down to a simmer and I'm gonna cover, let it cook for about 30 to 40 minutes. While the chicken is cooking, let's go ahead and work on the last bit of this recipe is just simply toasting some almonds, a tiny, tiny bit of olive oil, and we're gonna go in. Whenever I toast nuts, I have to remember not to go away because they can turn from beautiful golden brown to fully burned in like seconds. So just make sure that you're minding the almonds, tossing them around until they gain some color. So we're looking for golden brown. Beautiful. They're starting to turn color. And at this point in time, I'm just gonna go ahead and turn my heat off because the pan is still warm and the almonds will continue to kind of toast in the pan. Let's see what things look like right now. Oh, yes. The final finishing touch for me, my almonds that we've toasted earlier. Oh yes, gorgeous. Oh my gosh, I cannot wait to dig in. Smelling a little tang, a little sweetness, a little warmth, it's the best. Oh, here we go, and I like to grab a bit of the sauce too, so I'm gonna grab a spoon. Oh, yes. Now this is a sort of meal that I love to serve with something like basmati rice or couscous, because then you could just spoon your beautiful sauce on top of the couscous or the rice. And I have both recipes right here for you, so make sure you check that out. And now the moment of truth. And yes, the lemons are fully edible at this point, including the rind. It's so good. This is an absolute must try. Find the recipe for my easy Moroccan chicken over on themediterraneandish.com. I will see you later. Ciao. I'm not kidding, it's really actually good.